This story begins with a cat, and a very unhappy one at that. This mischievous kitty has managed to get herself caught up in a tree. No amount of coaxing will bring her down. Food won't do it. Toys don't work. And the limb she's stuck on is too flimsy to support a human rescuer. No matter what they do, the miffed little muffin just ignores them and continues to whine. They talk about calling the fire department, but no one wants to bother firemen over something this silly. Finally, one of the guys gets an idea. They throw a line of string over the end of the bow on which the cat is stranded. Carefully pulling it down, they reach out to grab the elusive animal. But just as she comes within reach of their fingertips, the string breaks. Flinging the frightened feline into the stratosphere. The cat's rescuers are left speechless, struck dumb by a tragic sense of, whoops. They never see the mortified muffin again. Meanwhile, half a mile down the block, a family has recently moved in from the city. With a nice backyard to play in, the family's 10-year-old has been praying for a pet cat. But so far, the angels, along with mom and dad, have dragged their feet on the matter. Still, the kid wishes for a kitty to call his own and wonders if he'll ever get one. That day, his answer comes out of a clear blue sky. The kid is instantly delighted, even if his mom is slightly amazed and wonders just how this incredible little event happened. From that day onward, she loves to tell the story of her miracle kitty that literally dropped from heaven. It's the strangest thing. All of a sudden, this cat fell from heaven. It's like a miracle cat. It's a story with a happy ending. But is there really any truth to the tale of the catapulted cat? This legend plays on two distinct images, I think, and two distinct ideas. The first is the people who come to help who actually create a worse situation than obtained originally. The second part of the legend deals with the idea of people taking something that's ordinary, if unusual, and seeing something miraculous in it. We know that in today's culture, people are often seeing images of the Virgin in waterfalls, in smoke, in window panes. And I think to a certain extent that this legend plays and mocks the idea that people would see something as miraculous, which was simply happenstance. Stories of animals falling from the sky go back to the book of Exodus. One of the 10 plagues of Egypt was a rain of frogs. But in the urban legend, when the cat goes ballistic, it's seen as a blessing. And animal blessings are taken very seriously by many who see their pets as among God's most precious creatures. I think people have a real strong connection to animals because, you know, they're, sometimes they're easier than people. They don't talk back to you. Uh, they're there to greet you at your door. And so there's a great love that people have for animals, and the church wants to celebrate that. So, in the name of St. Francis of Assisi, who is traditionally associated with animals, the church provides pet blessings for a menagerie of creatures great and small. On the fifth and sixth days of creation, you called forth fish in the sea. We've had snakes, iguanas, tarantulas. I was up at the old mission Santa Barbara, they brought horses and through a blessing prayer and a sprinkling of holy water, we bless those animals. So if a cat is falling out of the sky, landing in someone's arms, you know, especially if the woman is, is, has a spiritual connection, people with a strong spiritual connection see God's work in all things. So yeah, why not a cat falling in your arms? Why not indeed? Except there's the question of what you might find at the far end of the tabby's trajectory. For that answer, we turn from faith to physics. And it's only logical to ask those who fly through the air for a living what it's like to become live ammo. The first time it's scared, then you have to be very good concentrate. It's so hard, but for me it's 
super great. Of course, it doesn't take a pet psychic to figure out that cats probably don't feel this way. Which is why the circus cats are restricted to more modest aerial routines. True or false, the legend of the backyard catastrophe endures for one simple reason. It's very funny. You're going to remember it because it makes such a wonderful picture of this thing zooming through the heavens. You see, you see it coming. But just what distance could the far-flung feline really travel in this situation? Well, there's only one way to know for sure. To learn the truth, the legend must be tested under rigorous scientific conditions. And there's no better person to do this than a man who knows his catapults. 58 feet. It was a machine capable of throwing very heavy objects. The largest ones we know of were able to throw horse carcasses, dead horses, over a castle wall and into the castle. I've developed this catapult that simulates the, the pull of a tree branch. And it's a reasonable assumption. This is a, it takes about 40, 50 pounds to pull this, this, uh, this arm back and it's about six feet long, which is reasonable for what a normal tree branch would be. So we're gonna see how far it can throw a three pound, an eight pound, and a 12 pound cat. The three pound cat went 58 feet, far short of the half mile claimed in the legend. Next, the eight pounder is launched. 37 feet. But it only goes 37 feet. It's not looking good for the legend. The last feline to get his tail in a sling weighs 12 pounds. One. Thirty-five feet. Once the field work is done, we subject the data to scientific analysis. We know what the acceleration due to gravity is, so we know how long it's going to be in the air. We know how long it's going to take it to go up and come back down. It may sound like fuzzy logic, but when it comes down to the numbers, the legend doesn't seem to add up in the air times x, which is this component, will tell us what our distance is. So, what's the upshot of the story of the high-caliber kitty? It's, of course, ridiculous because the amount of energy it would take to fling even a three-pound object that far would be tremendous. There we go. And uh, the action of a tree branch is like a catapult without a sling. It's just, it's just going to push the object. It's not actually going to fling it. And so you wouldn't get enough range. The physics prove that the legend is not believable. In this tale, a kitty stranded in a tree became a blessing. 